Joining me now to discuss all things space is ANU astrophysicist Brad Tucker here in the studio. Thanks for your time as ever. No worries. All right, first of all, we're going to talk about sugar. Sugar, that's Basically. right. Sugar found on meteorites. So what does all this mean? So when we're talking about sugar, we're not talking about, you know, stuff you put in your drink or coffee or whatever. We're talking about literally rocks from space hitting the Earth. And so when these rocks hit, they land on the ground and land as meteorites or meteor craters. Yeah. Now, one in particular found in Victoria about 50 years ago, actually, in Murchison. And it was actually quite special. And when they studied it, they actually found a type of, in the sugar family, that was on this meteorite here. And this is what happens when they land. Mm. But more importantly, it's the same type of sugar you actually find in what's called RNA, the stuff that repairs your DNA, essentially. And so this is kind of exciting, because if you find one of the ingredients that goes into the stuff that makes us up, and it came from a rock in outer space, this gives more evidence to potential ingredients from outer space actually transplanting themselves on Earth and potentially sparking life here three billion years ago. So that when this hit Earth, it sparked... Well, so this one somewhere. didn't, because it happened 50 years ago. Right. But the question is, can have these, you know, do these carry things, A, in space? Mm. And B, could have one hit the Earth three billion years ago and created it? So the fact is that when we find a random meteorite that just hits the Earth, and it actually carries these ingredients for life, it's not that far-fetched to think this happened three billion years ago that created that spark that created life. That created life, so that without that hitting, none of us would be here. That but was the start for everything. That, this is one of the held theories of how life actually came to be on Earth, right. what created that initial spark. And if it came from space, and we keep finding these things on space that do hit the Earth, Maybe that is possible. So that was the one step missing in that old Guinness ad where the thing emerges from the water. Exactly. It's the thing smashing into the earth right. in the beginning. All That's right. right. That is interesting. Um, Jupiter's moon, its fourth moon, I think. That's right. Well done. Might have a new, well, are we calling it an ocean or is it a body of water? What? So, so it is. So, you know, Europa, which is one of the large moons, as you said, of Jupiter, the fourth moon, one of the what we call Galilean moons, uh, we've known that it's had an icy crust and data from... 30 years ago, hinted at water. Uh, and when we talk about water, we actually do talk about liquid water underneath this icy crust here. Uh, but a recent observation from the Hubble Space Telescope essentially stared at Europa for two years straight. And what they saw was in the cracks of Europa, so you can kind of see these are like ice cracks yeah. in it, that they actually saw plumes of water, something about uh, on order of about 5,000 liters per second spilling out. So kind of like a crack like we have in Antarctica, and a whole bunch of water then got shot out of this and plumed into space. Right. And so this might be kind of this... this water floating through space. Yeah, pretty much. There's essentially, it's like a geyser erupted, and now there's just a giant ocean, not quite, but enough to fill about a 100 Olympic swimming pools worth of water shotting out. And so we get excited by Europa because if there really is a huge ocean of water underneath this crust think of Antarctica, the possibilities of life existing on this place right now mm. are exciting. And the fact is, it kind of resembles what we think Earth would have been like three billion years ago. Again, that condition for life being created. So on Earth, our oceans are tidal because of our moon. Does that That's mean right. on a moon there's no tides in oceans? Aha, there can be because of Jupiter. Right. So we actually know Jupiter pulls on this. And in fact, there's a theory that says big tugs from Jupiter cause these geysers to emit right. and actually cause the eruption. So there very well could be tides and it actually... Because just think of Jupiter as a big moon, basically. Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's the reverse, the reverse effect. Um, now, finally, NASA is testing an underwater rover in Antarctica. Yep. Uh, now, this could be sent to Europa in the future, this same moon. Yep. Um, I'm worried about this uh, Vice story. Is it a bit sensational? It just says it could be used to search for aliens on Jupiter's moon. Well, look, yeah, it is. And ultimately, the question of Europa is, there, is there life underneath the water, right? That's why people care about Europa. This is the actual size? Yeah, it's not this very big. And so the idea is it's this underwater crawler. So how do you get beneath an ice sheet that is a kilometre or two deep? Um, that's a big question, right? You know, because the entire, and unlike Earth, where it's just Antarctica or the Arctic, uh, Europe is, in, the entire moon is enveloped in this. So they've been testing these things in Antarctica because it's the most Europa-like uh, to see can this crawler, this robot, get underneath the surface and then kind of crawl in the ocean, so to speak. But how does it get through two kilometres of ice. So one of the things we think about is that you can actually attach a drill that will actually, a heated drill that actually melt the ice, heated kind of, drill, yeah, right. essentially like a core, and then if you can get deep enough, it can suction itself to the ice and search for it, because ultimately, if there's life, it's in the oceans underneath the cross, and that's right. why we care about it. Okay. And so, you know, Europa is going to be a big target, and it's great to see, so they had a partner with the Australian Antarctic Division to actually get their equipment to Antarctica, and 
So the story that Vice had just saying, oh, search for aliens, I'm, it led me to one tangent. I don't think I've asked you this before. When did this common perception of an alien with a sort of a big head and a soft body, when did that really take off? So this is great because I love this question because aliens don't exist in our culture before the 1880s. It right. just doesn't exist. And it's actually because of a combination of Orson Welles' book, War of the Worlds, mm -hmm. and our knowledge of it that it quickly develops. And so all of it just comes from sci-fi of kind of this idea of developing into a green body with weird head yeah. and that sort of stuff. It's actually because we're just projecting ourselves. You know, there's no reason you couldn't find alien elephants. It's just as likely to find alien elephants yeah. as alien you are on. Well, they've always got two legs to... Um, That's right. They're kind of... Uh, 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 the development's sort of like an amazingly massive brain because exactly. they've been able to come through and find us out of nowhere. That's right, because obviously we, we project ourselves yeah. onto it. And but it's a this, useless sort of body often. Yeah, because I think it, it's really this projection that we think if it's us, it will be using its brain more and brain yeah. power because we perceive that as power. That's kind of how we rule over all the more dangerous... Exactly. And in fact, if you notice in alien culture, when we go to their home, they're peaceful. When they come to us, they're always violent, which is, again, it's a projection of ourselves because we're such nice people that never have arguments. Exactly, that's right. So it's a really interesting thing, but when we talk about Europa, it's just as likely there could be fish, and that's the kind of alien life that we're thinking about. Life literally on a moon. Of, and, you know, in, in a decade, we could be seeing this thing on Europa, searching for these water, this alien water world. Alien fish, there you go. Brad yeah. Tucker, thank you. Thanks.